What hope we have, even in the longest night, for the light will overcome. We will not fear, for we know the sun will rise. Hallelujah is our song. What peace we have, even in this wounded world, where the battle rages on. We will not fear, for we know who heals our souls. Hallelujah is our song. Hallelujah, hallelujah, he is risen over all. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah is our song. Good afternoon. in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the communion of the holy spirit be with you all amen dear brothers and sisters in christ jesus on this 21st sunday in ordinary time jesus is asking his apostles do you want to leave also and the peter says Lord to whom shall we go you have the words of eternal life Peter was able to respond to Jesus because of his personal relationship with him and the wisdom that is given to him by the holy spirit if Jesus asks us the same question do you want to leave me do we have an answer to him if we don't have the guidance of the holy spirit if we don't have that personal relationship with jesus we will not be able to answer him so for the times that we fail to have the real relationship with jesus let's ask the merciful lord to forgive us and give us his grace and peace I confess to almighty God and to you my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned and what have I done and what have I failed to my fault to my fault to my most grievous fault therefore I ask bless me and your words all the angels and saints and to you my brothers and sisters May almighty God have mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life Amen. Lord have mercy Lord have Christ have mercy Lord have mercy Lord, 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 Lord,
Cause the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose. Grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise. That amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. If it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve the gods your fathers served beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose country you are now dwelling. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But the people answered, far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. For it was the Lord, our God, who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, out of a state of slavery. He performed those great miracles before our very eyes and protected us along our entire journey and among the peoples through whom we passed. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. 
I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. The Lord has eyes for the just and ears for their cry. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them. And from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Many are the troubles of the just one, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. He watches over all his bones, not one of them shall be broken. Taste and see the goodness of the A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church. He himself, the Savior of the body, as the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church, and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall live his, leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. The word of the Lord. Your word 
words, Lord, our spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Many of Jesus' disciples who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, Many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. Gospel of the Lord. So today's gospel is a conclusion to the bread of life discourse that we have been listening since four weekends. Today, some of the disciples of Christ after listening to Jesus telling them, if you want to have fullness of life, you shall eat my flesh and drink my blood. That was something that Jewish people were not able to take and some of the followers of Christ were not able to take, so they wanted to stop listening to Jesus and leave from him. So in this context, Jesus is asking his own apostles, so now that you see some of the disciples and some of the Jewish people that wanted to live, do you also want to live? And then it is Peter who says to the good Lord, Lord, to whom shall we go? We have the words of eternal life. Before we understand what are these words that can give us eternal life, we need to understand the first and the second reading. The first reading taken from the book of Joshua. Joshua is a successor of Moses who is leading people to the promised land. The Israelites have deviation in their ideology of worshiping God and started to join Amorites and their gods and goddesses to worship them. So in that context, Joshua wanted to ask all the Israelites to make a clear choice and covenant to worship God and God alone. So he tells them, he's asking the Israelites, you make your choice. Do you want to worship God away or you choose to worship other gods and goddesses? And before that, Joshua has clearly mentioned to them, even if you deviate yourself and go worshipping other gods and goddesses, but me and my family will always worship God halfway. 
And then all the Israelites from all the tribes have said to Joshua, we are with you. We will be worshiping God Ave alone. And that's how there is a covenant that is made between the Israelites and God. And the same covenant that we see in the second reading, St. Paul writing to Ephesians, speaking about the covenant of a marriage between a man and woman. They both are equals and they both have to love one another and respect each other, protect the dignity of one another. While we speak about the spouses, how they needed to love each other, how they needed to understand each other, how they needed to respect each other, we also see Jesus Christ as the groom and the church as the bride. That's why St. Paul says very clearly, this is why a man and woman through the sacrament of marriage becomes one flesh. And here, in the covenant with Jesus, we become, through receiving the Eucharist, the part of the mystical body of Christ. That's why Jesus Christ loves us, Jesus Christ respects us, and Jesus Christ protects our dignity to be an heir in his kingdom with him. So that's why the covenant in the Old Testament that the Israelites are worshipping God alone and the covenant between a man and woman through the sacrament of wedding and a covenant of we believing in Christ and receiving his precious body and blood, we become the part of Christ's own body where we call this mystical communion, the mystical body of Christ. So after learning these two readings about the covenants, and if you come to the gospel where Jesus is asking his apostles, and we always see uh, Jesus poses a question to the apostles, and it is Peter who spontaneously responds. Now Peter is saying, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. So what are these words? Uh, that give eternal life. The words of eternal life from Christ is uh, that he says, uh, I am the life. I am the life. And whoever believes in me, even though they die, they live. So that's why here, Peter is uh, looking at Christ, looking into Christ, and he says, Lord, you have the words of eternal life. For Peter, the words of eternal life are that our only hope is you. And in you, we have our hope. That is why we see the word that became flesh and the flesh that gives us fullness of life. The word that became flesh and the flesh that gives us eternal and fullness of life. That's why Peter is saying, Lord, you have the words of eternal life. Where can we go? And then we, as his disciples, have to understand. How can we respond to Jesus if Jesus is asking us today? If Jesus is asking us today, do you want to live? Like these days, it's easy to get upset for even little things. Like we even, we even get upset like somebody sat in my regular pew. So we get upset, and then, okay, I'm not going to church. What happened? The so-and-so person is not coming. Like, oh, he or she is upset. Why? Somebody took her place. See how Satan is so powerful? It's so easy for us to get upset with the ideology of the church. It is easy for us to get upset with the hierarchy of the church. It is easy for us to get upset with the deacons. It is easy to get upset uh, for us with the priests. It is easy to get upset for us with bishops and hierarchy. Like we can easily say, oh, I'm not going to go. That's why Jesus is not forcing anybody. He's not telling his apostles, okay, I see some of the disciples leaving. I see some of the Jewish people leaving. I see some of the 
follow living okay if you want to go you go he is not saying that and he is also saying don't go stay with me he is not saying that jesus is says saying do you also want to live jesus is not forcing anybody because jesus knew that it is a free gift that we want to choose to be with him and know that after we end this journey here on earth there is a new journey that is beginning in his kingdom so he is making it very clear there is no ambiguity there is vividness and there is clarity and jesus is not forcing anyone and it is we we have to see how our relationship is maintained with christ our savior a lot of us most of, most of the times we focus our journey on christ and live our lives but satan will somehow uh, make a trick and then make us easily get upset like if you are connected with christ like we cannot be upset and then distance ourselves from god nothing will disturb us because our connection is with jesus so for us to have that words of eternal life in our lives we need to remember three things the first thing is god is light the first thing we all have to remember is god is light once we know that god is life every life comes from him so the second thing is god is love the second thing is god is love so whenever we kind of feel isolated whenever we are upset whenever we are disturbed whenever we are isolated we can desire to draw that love from christ and the third thing that we have to remember today is god is the light god is the life god is the love and god is the light so the light of christ will dispel our darkness the light of christ will help us walk in the bright light the light of christ will help us to be truthful and honest to ourselves that's when we can be more resilient or oh, somebody is taking my view that's no problem if somebody is just getting me upset at the church that's no problem i have my roots and connection with christ and this will happen when we are walking in the light of christ or oh, somebody said in the mass i am not upset because the good lord has the truth so this is how we will be following and we will be listening and we will be walking in the light of christ so that's why for you and for me to know that jesus has the eternal words of eternal life we need to remember these three things the first one god is life god is love and god is my light so if you have these three things then we have great bonding with uh, jesus our savior where we will say to jesus like peter lord to whom shall we go you have the words of eternal life that's why when whenever jesus spoke about life he said i am the light and whenever jesus spoke about love he said i am the love when jesus spoke about light he said i am the light of the world he is not saying i know about the life i know about the love i know about the light is not saying that jesus is very clear telling us teaching us guiding us that i am the life i am the love and i am the light if we keep these three l's my dear brothers and sisters in christ jesus we know how you and i will answer like peter lord to whom shall we go you have the words of eternal life let us pray for everyone who have gone away from the lord that they will come back and have that good connection with him good relationship with him that they will have fullness of life along with us when it's time for us to be with him in his kingdom god bless us all Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God.
the only begotten Son, and on the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, unsubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary, and became man. He suffered death that was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, and he will never will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Guru, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now turn to God our Father in faith and ask him to bless our own intentions and needs. That we, as members of the church, may share the saving message of Jesus through our compassionate outreach to others and by lives of faithful witness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may abound in generosity, mercy, and protection for all people of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those who are suffering from the effects of war and violence may receive God's peace and the help and strength to rebuild their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all members and households of this faith community may have the grace to choose this day to serve the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those who have died in God's grace, especially Dave Corder, Maria Luz del Carne Rosales, Elda Avina, and Isaac D. McLean Sr. may taste and see the goodness of the Lord in eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Let us remember to pray for all those people who have asked of us to pray for them and to whom we said we'll pray for their intentions and all those who have gone away from the good Lord that they may come back in faith, believing and living in him and Matt who is celebrating his birthday on Monday that he will have fullness of life with God in his kingdom and all those who needed good health and healing that the good Lord may bless them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, let's pray for our own intentions. God, our loving Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, who has the words of eternal life that can fill us and give us hope that we will have fullness of life with you in your kingdom. As we have come before you with all our intentions, if it is your will, bless them and grant them to us through Christ our Lord. I am the bread of life, I am the hope in night, I am the door wide open, I am the shepherd's light, I am the truth and light, I am the way and life, I am who am and I am for you, come and follow me.
pray my dear sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to god the father almighty may the lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church o lord who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all best to graciously on us we pray the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our lord Amen. the lord be with you Amen. lift up your hearts Amen. let us give thanks to the lord our god Amen. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god for by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state and by his suffering cancelled out our sins by his raising from the dead he has opened the ways to eternal life and by ascending to you o father he has unlocked the gates of heaven and so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim holy o lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit 
You give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we were nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of his an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, our blessed chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis of Pope, Myron Carter Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people we have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all we were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we all dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his banquet. Lord, Lord I am not worthy.
Savior us alone. Break the chains that bind us, speak your healing word, and where you lead will follow, transfigure us, O Lord. Down from heights of glory, into the depths below, the love of God self-ending, the love of God to show. You light the path before us, the way that we must go. Transfigure us, O Lord, transfigure us, O Lord. Break the chains that bind us, speak your healing word. And where you lead will follow, transfigure us, O Lord. Light for those in darkness, the hungry have their fear. Glad tidings for the humble, the healing of all ears. Your glory, God's promises fulfilled. Transfigure us, O Lord, transfigure us, O Lord. Break the chains that bind us, speak your healing word. And where you lead will follow, transfigure us, O Lord. Pardon for the sinner, a shepherd for the sheep, a drink of living water for all who thirst and seek. And feasting at your table, the lowly and the least. Transfigure us, O Lord, transfigure us, O Lord. Break the chains that bind us, speak your healing word. And where you lead will follow, transfigure us, O Lord. To the holy city, Jerusalem, you go. Your face set toward the ending, the cross to be your throne. Shall we journey with you and share your pastoral road? Transfigure us, O Lord, transfigure us, O Lord. Break the chains that bind us, speak your healing word. And where you lead will follow, transfigure us, so Lord.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Kindly be seated for the announcements. Every member of our parish has a treasure they can share with our community to help us build the kingdom of God. We invite you to visit our parish ministry fair this Sunday from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. Please note that the date for the open healing prayer night has been changed to Tuesday, September 3rd at 6 o'clock p.m. We apologize for any inconvenience this change in week may cause. On Wednesday, August 28th, we are excited to welcome John Sablon to our parish. John will be giving an insightful talk on bringing up Catholic children in a modern world. This talk is perfect for current, expecting, or future parents. Don't miss it. It will be at 6.30 in the gym. For more information on these announcements, please see our parish website. So I have a reminder again about uh, the ministry fair day. Like we have so many ministries in our parish, and there are a lot of you who are part of it, but it will be nice if some of you are considering to be part of the ministries so you're welcome to choose them. So we have it this Sunday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. So kindly come join and see what kind of ministries will help you make use of the gifts that God has given you so that you can help us build the kingdom of God. So evangelization is not the job of the clergy alone. So it's all our job through our baptism. So I kindly request you to look into these ministries and see where you, where you can use your gifts and talents that God has given you. And then I really have to thank all of you for we have achieved our bishop's ministry uh, goal for this year. And I thank every one of you. But at the same time, we added something for our own parish goal in order to kind of fix the air conditioning or the heating system in our church. So that's kind of roughly looking at it. It's like seventy-five to hundred thousand dollars. So we have other day-to-day -day operations. You know, I believe in God providing us when we need. God will always provide. But at the same time, Jesus also said in the Gospel according to Matthew chapter fourteen, verse fourteen: "Ask and you will be given." Right? So that's the reason I keep asking you, so that I'll be given to make these things happen for our, you know. Uh, parish, wonderful parish. So I am really thankful to you for your generosity in uh, completing our bishop's ministry goal. And at the same time, we still need some more money where we can fix this. Because once this is on, if it is cool, and it's going to be cool and cold, we don't have any monitor. Like if it's hot, it's just hot. We have to just shut it down uh, if you don't want that heat. So there's no way we can monitor. So we just wanted to see we can monitor, like reduce or increase, you know. So we need to have a new uh, system installed. So that's costing about uh, seventy-five to hundred thousand dollars. But I'm sure, ask, it'll be given, and I know God will uh, inspire you and God will provide us. So another thing, like we have this tent raffle tickets are sold outside. And every year we have this fall festival in the month of September, and we have 10,000 uh, winning prize. And each ticket is only $100. We have uh, parishioners sitting outside, volunteers, uh, looking for you to see them and buy one ticket each, right? So you can win $10,000 and contribute to the AC too. You know, <laughs> you don't have to give 10,000. Just give 100, you get 10,000. So you can add to that. So thank you so much. Just remind them, there's only 500 tickets. So you've got a one in 500 chance of winning. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good odds, better than the lottery. <laughs> 
So thank you, thank you for all your generosity and God bless all of you and God bless our parish. Thank you. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. You all have a blessed evening. What joy we have for the stone is rolled away and the tomb holds nothing now. No sting of death, no power over sin or grave. Alleluia is our song. What hope we have even in the longest night for the light will overcome. And we shall live, sinners we will rise to saints. Alleluia is our song. Alleluia, alleluia, he is risen all around. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Is our song. Have a blessed weekend.